What's going on guys? So I am out here in Elkhart, Indiana. I'm actually at Lippert's corporate headquarters watching this gentleman negotiate a RV frame in here. Check out all this cool stuff. Well, the point of this video isn't to talk about this stuff, but it is kind of to talk about this stuff. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna get out of there, walk around here. All right, so with me today, I have Dan and Craig. Both are with Lippert. You wanna take a second to introduce yourselves and what you do here. I'm Dan, supervisor of the Technical Institute. By the way, I, I love this backdrop behind you. It, it makes if I crop this in, you would be there. Very <laughs> cool. And we got Craig, what do you do? Hey everybody, Craig Jockum. I'm the Director of Customer Experience here at Lippert. Well, that's absolutely awesome. And I know that customer experience is such an important part of Lippert in general. It kind of bleeds off into every department and everything that's going on. And that's the one message that's been loud and clear here is they want their customers to be informed. They want their customers to have a good experience. And they want customers to be return customers, right? Very rarely do people do the term buy once, cry once. They usually buy like six or seven times and cry the entire time until they get the thing they want. Sure. In the RV world, that means lots of upgrades, lots of things being added to RVs, lots of things that may already be on the RV that just needs a component attached to it, which is now called a prepped product. All that said, there's a lot of very technical aspects to owning an RV. Um, if you think that an RV is like your home, you're probably right, except your home being drugged down the road, going over inclement conditions, bumps, and being subjected to earthquakes and hurricanes at the same time. All of that stuff can impact the performance of your RV. All of that stuff can lead to things breaking. I don't think there's any anybody in the RV world that is gonna tell you getting into RVing is always gonna be fun. Getting into RVing is always gonna be the most relaxing thing you ever do. Um, the first time you have to disconnect or connect your RV, or the first time you have to back into a spot you've never backed into, you'll learn that very quickly. So where am I going with all this? So the folks at Lippert actually have a really, really cool program that they've launched, and, and it's exciting because it just shows their dedication to getting customers and maybe people who are looking to get into RVing more educated. And I'm going to give Craig an opportunity to kind of discuss and talk about what this program is. Sure. Yeah. So I, I love what you said about the RV lifestyle and how, you know, initially maybe it's the fantasy that draws you in, um, but the reality sets in that there is some maintenance, there is some upgrades, there is some work that goes into doing this lifestyle well. And like it or love it, hate it, indifferent, Lippert's gonna be a part of your RV ownership journey from start to finish. Um, it, we're only getting bigger, right? So we wanna make sure that we have all the resources in place for RV owners to make sure that their experience is the best that it can be. And one of those offerings is a new service that came from our Lippert Scouts community. It was a, one of the first ideas that came two years ago when Lippert said, hey, we're gonna do customer experience as a department. We're gonna put resources in place where these folks have a full-time job to listen to customers and then actually do something with the feedback that we're getting from them. RV Owner School is one of those things that came through our community and came to life. So this last summer, we had 10 courses uh, 10 classes rather, um, 24 different states represented, oh, uh, just shy of 200 attendees. It was our first real run at doing RV Owner School. Couldn't be more proud of how the team really came together. You know, the, the truth is Dan and his team, they all had full-time jobs before we launched RV Owner School. Um, so to put this on top of what they were doing and execute it at such a high level, really proud of how the teams were able to do that. And a lot of the feedback that we were hearing throughout the summer allowed us to tweak the class listen to our customer, iterate, continuous improvement. It's in our blood. So we did that and 2023 is shaping up to be a really exciting year for RV Owner School. Um, and it's all because of customer feedback. I mean, they really, from the idea, from telling us what classes you wanna hear, to even telling us how much do you think it's worth to you, you know, to, to come all the way to Elkhart to learn this stuff. So. It's kind of the, the history of RV Owner School, if you will. And your classes will be opening up or starting again soon. So do you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. So for the class list 2023, we'll have a registration link on our website. Um, if you're not already a part of Lippert Communities, uh, the Scouts program will also be announcing all those dates in our community as well. So just keep an eye out. If it's something that sounds interesting to get your hands on some parts, get some formal training from experts that have been doing this for years, I'm telling you, this is an experience unlike any other. Coming from Lipper, 
who else better than the component manufacturer that could either make or break a, a trip? So it's it's all a good time, and and I think we even feed some of the people too. We feed them <laughs> breakfast and lunch every day, every day. Yeah, and yeah. we know how to do food well. Yeah. And you know what? What's really interesting, and this is something I'm just going to comment on. There are a lot of manufacturers out there in the world. You buy your TV from probably one or two or three different companies. You buy your washing machine. You buy your refrigerator. You buy your car. And how often, though, do those companies proactively reach out and set up programs to get you involved? I know I've never gotten a call from Whirlpool. I've never gotten a call from Samsung or these companies that want me to actually attend a training course to help me understand and help me be part of a community. Sure, everyone has their websites and they all have forums that you can join to talk with other people. But the reality is, is the involvement just really isn't there most of the time. They're great companies. They make great products. But you're inevitably at some point going to have some issue. And... That issue may be because something fails. It may be because something breaks. It may be because it's defective. Being able to know that you have folks at the manufacturer who want to share that information with you, who want you to share your experience with them, share your reviews, share your experience with other folks who are having issues like that. You know, just a second ago, one of the folks uh, over here asked if they could install a hydraulic leveling system on a, on a much older fifth wheel. And... You can buy the components. You know, he said, yes, you can buy the components. However, how much is the tool that you typically use to crimp your connections? A couple thousand dollars. A couple thousand dollars. So what happens when you're like, you can buy the components? You go on, you know, the A-letter business and you find it and you're like, hey, look, they actually sell it. You get the whole thing in and then you find out that you can't install it because you don't have the, the tools, you don't have the experience, you don't have the equipment you need that you thought you could simply just you know tackle with your garage tools. The, the reality of RVs is there's a lot of specialty equipment that goes into them. Not a lot of specialty tools, right? There's not a ton of them, but there are certain things that you do need to be aware of that can make your life so much easier when you do have a problem. Whether it's with your water heater, whether it's with your furnace, whether it's with your AC, there's so many components to this stuff. And it's great to have the relationship with the manufacturer who actually wants you to be part of that conversation. They want to bring you in and train you. They want to show you how to do this stuff. JD, the, the one comment I want to make on that and, and just goes to show the, the real commitment that's being made here by Lipper, uh, our number one metric in customer experience as a department is hours spent with our viewers and, and our customers. So we, ca we keep track of all that stuff to accumulate just this massive amount of hours spent out in the field listening to our customers. Are we always going to get it right? No. But we're trying and we're listening and we're ready to get that feedback because we do want to do better. Uh, that's just that's just who we are at Lippert. Um, and that's been a development over the last two years. We continue to grow, we continue to evolve, but the one thing that's remained the same is how many hours we're tracking with our customers just to, to understand what's really happening out there. You know, at the end of any good training course, trainers and instructors should always ask one question of their class. What did you get out of this class? Yeah. What type of feedback are you getting? Uh, we're getting great feedback. Um, a lot of, uh, for the first time for RV owner schools, we've been doing this with technicians for just about nine years now. Um, so we've kind of got that a little bit under control. But for RV owner schools, um, it's it's a little different. It's, hey, that was a little too much for me. Uh, I didn't, um, it was a little too technical or it wasn't technical enough. So we're trying to find that middle ground because we're not trying to make uh, RV owners RV technicians. That's not the goal. What we want you to do is be able to help not only yourself, but maybe the person next to you. Maybe the person next to you doesn't know who Lippert is. Maybe they don't know what a Lippert is, and they're having a hard time setting up their leveling system. But you've been to a Lippert technical uh, school. You know, you sat through the course. Uh, we're launching uh, owners webinars this year. So maybe they've watched that webinar and you can walk over and help your neighbor out, right? So maybe you don't have what they have, but you've seen it. You've had other people that you know struggle with it. And it's just RVs, RVers helping RVers, right? Because that's really what it's all about. And uh, like Craig said, just camping well, right? Keep it going and then making sure everybody's having fun. Um, yep. So the goal of the RV owner schools is Take it, take out of it what you want. If you want to learn everything that we throw at you, because we're going to throw a lot at you, then take every bit of it. But if you really just want to know, hey, what's my regular maintenance schedule? What type of tools should I have with me? If that's what you want, then take that out of it. It's really, it's really a grab bag of how much do you want to get out of it. Yeah, I always refer to it as the choose your own adventure of RV knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. These guys are, are 
educators. And I think that's an important distinction to make. They know how to teach people because it is their practice, it's their profession. It just so happens that the subject matter is RV components. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think, you know, I'm not a technically minded individual, but sitting in a course from day one through to day three, I mean, it's like, it's really empowering. And I want RV owners to feel that when they come and, and that, you know, spend time with your team. Yeah, the feedback we get is, oh, I never knew I had to do that with you know my level up system, or I never knew that that was the maintenance schedule for uh, my axles, or oh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be doing that on Schwintech, and that's detrimental to the system. Mm -hmm. that, those are the things we're getting, and we get feedback like, oh, I really uh, wish you guys would do this course, and you know whether we can do that course or we can point them to a webinar, that's the goal one way or another. We want everyone to get educated. Um, to the level they want, right? So if you're a DIYer and you want to learn how to install something, I'll show you how. And if you're just the type of person who, hey, you know, I told this thing, I've owned it for five years, I want to make sure I'm maintaining my awnings properly, you're going to learn that too. So it's really a grab bag of where are you living uh, and how much do you really want to do or how much do you want to get involved. And if you just want to learn, that way you can take it into the dealership for them to work on. And that way you have education in your pocket, just another tool in your tool belt, right? Mm -hmm. You have that tool, you go in there, and they say, hey, you need to replace A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And you're like, well, I just was at Lippert, and they said just do A, B, C, and D, and that should be okay. Mm -hmm. At least you have that ability to understand what they're talking about, and they're just not throwing random things at you. Yep, and, you know, I really like that you mentioned that because for a lot of folks like myself, I, I consider myself very technically minded. But it doesn't mean that just because I know how to do something, I want to do it. Right. What it helps me do is understand why something's doing what it's doing. So, for instance, I hate dealing with, with 110. I, I'm, I can deal with 12 volt all day long, but 110 scares the crud out of me. And it, it shouldn't because, you know, electricians will tell you sometimes I would rather deal with 110 than I'd rather than 12 volt. But for me, I have a 12 volt experience. I have knowledge in that and I, I can tear into a vehicle like it's nothing and, and figure out what's going on. But home electrical, it just bothers me. Something scares me about it. And I think, you know, the fact that I, I, I have enough knowledge of it to know that if something's messing up, I can generally figure it out very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that technical knowledge oftentimes doesn't help me fix the problem, but it helps me make sure I'm calling the right person to fix the problem. Absolutely. And Let's I'm doing the right thing. Let's be real. We want to make sure our customers are safe. Absolutely. And first and foremost. There are yep. enough components on an RV that we're the manufacturer of that... Let's be honest, like yep. it you can, can crush you. You can seriously get injured. And, so. and that's certainly part of this RV owner school experience too, is to make sure that people know where they draw the line for themselves Absolutely. and help them realize the real implications of, is this a job I should take on my own? Or maybe that's where I should yeah. you know, phone I, my friend. I say that at the beginning of every one of our schools. I say, you know, everyone always asks me, when do I know I should stop working on it? That's that, it, that's it. You had to ask the question, that's yep. when you should stop working on it. Yep. It's for your safety. Yep, and if you think you have the right tool for the job and you don't know you have the right tool for the job, Absolutely. you probably don't have the right tool yep. for the job. Yep. yep. Well, I really appreciate it, Craig, Dan. Um, it's been really educational because the fact is that these classes are important, and there's a lot of folks who need to take them, especially if you're even considering or pondering full-timing it because you're going to be stuck in an area in a national park somewhere where something doesn't work right at some point. It's going to be 11 p.m. at night when you figure out what it is. Probably nobody, raining. Yeah, probably raining. <laughs> Nobody's going to take your phone call because everyone's closed or nobody wants to be woken up. And you're going to be Googling. You're going to be doing everything you can off of the, the, the satellite Internet service that you barely have. Pretty much. And you're going to be stuck. And you, you won't have the knowledge that you know you should have. And if this class can help you out of that situation just one time, it's worth it. So, guys, definitely I'll put a link to the registration uh, site from Lippert in the video. So you guys can go in the description, check it out, get signed up if you're interested. Um, if you're close to, to Elkhart, Indiana, you really have no excuse. And to spend your time up here, they're going to feed you. They're going to treat you well. You're going to learn a lot about a company you probably didn't know much about. And I'm going to venture to say, for those of you who hung in this long into the video that hate Lippert, that are Lippert haters, that every time you post anything positive about Lippert, they post 20 things negative about it, you probably need to attend the class more than anybody. That way you can at least learn and meet the people you hate. Yeah, our you door's know? open. Yeah, yeah. Door's open. yeah. And, and give honestly, them an opportunity. One of the things about that, I, I like that you call that out because we do, we hear from it all. And, and 
I welcome that because to me, that's where we get the most constructive criticism. Um, people can sing our praises all day long, and that's great. It might fill our cup for the day, but where we can learn the most from are from the people who have a lot of negative things to say about us. And some of those will be past wounds that are still healing, and some of those might be decisions we're making today, but at the end of the day, we're still listening. I think that's key. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to help the people. So. Love the challenge. So, yeah. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for hosting me out here to talk about this. I think it's important. So, again, I'll put a link in the description, and uh, we'll hopefully get your class filled up because I think it's important that people get as educated as they can before they hit the road with their five to 20,000-pound <laughs> you know, RV in tow. Sounds good. Thanks, JD. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'm eyeballing that chair because I've been standing too long. I'll talk to you again very soon.